Welcome to Up All Night DIY. I'm Monica. Thanks for joining me. Today I'm participating in two collaborations. The Fourth Friday Challenge, hosted by my friends Sarah of Jujube DIY and Lisa of Our Gray House. This month's theme is Christmas in July. And the Plaid Ambassador Christmas in July collab, hosted by my friend Indy Annie Jones. More about that later. Stay tuned for details you'll want to hear. I have three easy Dollar Tree Coastal Christmas projects for you, so let's get into it. I'll be using the back side of this Dollar Tree Christmas sign from my stash. I'll give it a coat of Ceram Coat Rain Gray. We're going to make this look like weathered wood. I'm a Plaid Ambassador, so all the paint products and mediums I'm using are from Plaid, which are some of my favorites. Now that's dry. I'll apply some loose strokes of ceramic coat white following along the implied boards, you know, for a palette shiplack effect. I want some of the gray to peek through. With ceramic coat hippo gray, I'll use the edge of my brush to stroke in a line to separate the boards. As you can see, I'm not worrying about being very tidy. It's meant to look weathered, and a lot of it will get covered anyway, so not worrying about it. I dry brush each board with Ceram Coat Sand Dune. It's a lovely grayish color to add a bit more aging. And I'll set that aside for the mo. I drew and cut out a seahorse on cardstock which I'll trace onto my scrapbook paper. This is how I always did it prior to owning my silhouette, so I wanted to show you that can easily be done with just a pair of scissors. I did use my silhouette to cut my season's greeting stencil though, you can always use a pre-cut stencil or stamps, stickers, whatever you have. Before painting in my stencil, I'll dab it with Mod Podge. This prevents the paint from bleeding under the stencil. I'm applying it with a cosmetic sponge. I also apply a coat of Ceram Coat white paint before applying my final color. This is so my final coat is true to its color and hue. My top coat will be Velvet Teal. This is also Ceram Coat. Plaid sent this to me and the color is gorgeous. It's a rich, jewel-toned teal. So pretty. I peel off the vinyl to find some lovely crisp letters. And I weed out all the wee bits of vinyl. I deposit a healthy coat of Mod Podge to the back of the seahorse, and I'll place her alongside my lettering. I apologize for my voice, I have a wee bit of a summer cold. I'll roll over her with my brayer to make sure she's well adhered. Then I'll add a top coat of Mod Podge. The Mod Podge will make the paper more paintable because you know I'll be painting it. To add some shading, I'm using Folk Art Floating Medium and Velvet Teal. I prep my brush with Floating Medium, and I'll scoop some paint onto one corner of my brush, stroking it on my plate to load the bristles. With the paint side of my brush to the edge of the seahorse, I'll shade right around the shape, reloading as needed. I'll swoop in here and add a curl to her tail. And I'll add a couple more curls, one here by her cheek and by her fin, just to make her a bit more fancy. A few stripes on her back fin and another curl here too. 
why not? I repeat my shading, but on the outside of the seahorse, with the paint side of the brush to the edge of the seahorse shape. With a liner brush and white, I highlight the letters on the right side. This will really help the letters to stand out. I use a dot of Sobo glue to these holly leaves that I'll cut from scrapbook paper to add a touch of Christmas to her fin. And down here, by the lettering. I'll give them a top coat of Mod Podge. I use Ceram Coat Spring Green to shade the leaves in the same manner that I shaded the seahorse. I dipped out on the berries, two in sun kissed coral and one in watermelon. I'll stroke on white highlights to the leaves and dip out the berries. And I'll seal it with a clear matte spray. As I mentioned, this video is part of two playlists, the Fourth Friday Challenge hosted by Sarah and Lisa, and the Plaid Ambassador Christmas in July collab, hosted by my friend, Indy Annie Jones. You'll have a chance to win an Amazon gift card if you watch all the videos in the playlist. Each creator will mention a specific plaid product. In the comments, include that plaid product. You must be in the continental US to participate and you have until 5 p.m. on July 30th to enter. All pertinent information will be in the description box. Okay, on to DIY number two. Basically, we're going to repeat everything we did in DIY number one, but this time with this cute blue crab. I cut my stencil to say Sandy Claws and repeated the painting process using the same colors. I've cut my crab on this pretty straight paper and I'll Mod Podge him on just like I did before. Before I put his claws in place, I'll add his Santa hat. I actually cut this from white cardstock and painted it because I didn't have any red paper. And I'll use Mod Podge to adhere that. Then I'll Mod Podge his claws and legs in place and I'll give him a top coat of Mod Podge as well. Just like before, I highlight the letters with white. And I'll shade around the crab, inside and out, with velvet teal. With parsley and spring green, I paint in some holly leaves. And dip dot some berries and some kissed coral and watermelon. Once again, I'll mod podge some holly by the lettering. I'll shade it and highlight it and berries. As always, I'll spray seal. For DIY number three, I'll turn this Dollar Tree Santa sign into a mermaid. I'll just flip him over and upside down. I'm going to paint from here up white, just the part that will be her face. So as a guide, I traced her shape onto some paper and I'm 
kind of came up with a sketch of what she should look like. I'll use this pretty scrapbook paper as her hair and her tail. I trace the shape of her hair onto this orange paper and I'll use some scissors to cut it out. Just making sure that it fits. I trace on her tail and I'll cut that out too. Now I'm working a little sweetheart neckline, which I'll cut out. So she needs arms, so I drew some on white cardstock, and I printed out a scallop shell that says mermaid kisses and Christmas wishes for her to hold. First, I'll Mod Podge on her tail, coating both the paper and the piece. I do my best to align it. I'm not gonna worry if it's a wee bit wonky. I'll sort that out later. Using my brayer to make sure it's well adhered and I'll add a top coat. I put her hair in place, but I won't adhere it yet. This is just so I can judge where to put her arms. I'll mark their place with a pencil, then I'll Mod Podge them into place and give them a top coat. I add her hair. And her shell sign. And they'll both get a top coat. I cut her a tail fin, and I'll use my Sobo glue to stick them together. Now I'll give them a top coat of Mod Podge before adhering them to the mermaid. It's easier this way, since there's no support beneath them. They'll kind of be hanging out there on their own. I printed and cut Nautilus shells to decorate her hair. Same drill, once in place, I'll top coat with Mod Podge. I've cut some larger holly leaves to decorate her tail. I'll glue them together with Sobo and then Mod Podge them into place. Everything is assembled, so now I get to shade her. I'm using Folk Art Floating Medium which, by the way, is my secret plaid product and Canyon Sunset for her hair. I'm shading around the edges, then I'll add some curls. I'll shade with sand dune to define her face, neck, and arms, and I'll shade the shells with sand dune as well. Shading with velvet teal for her tail. Anywhere where I can see her scales will be shaded with velvet teal. I go right around the leaves on her tail fins. I also add just a hint around her shell crown just to pull that color in up there. Spring green around the leaves, and I'll dip that on the berries. As before, two sun-kissed coral and one watermelon. And I add holly around her crown. I felt like she needed more Christmas up there. I drill a hole at the top, and I'll make a hanger by wrapping craft wire around a paint bottle. I'll slip it into the hole and then I'll twist it around itself on the back. 
She'll get sealed like the others with clear matte sealer. Here's a final look. If you're interested, grab printables for the seahorse and crab signs. Link is in the description box, along with the links to Sarah, Lisa, and Annie's channels, the two playlists, a list of supplies, and the rules to the gift away. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe, and all that good stuff. Be sure to check out both playlists. Best of luck, all. Stay creative, my friends. Thanks for hanging with me. See you next time. Up all night with Monica.